Washington, Crossfire. On the left, Mike Kinsley. On the right, Pat Buchanan. Tonight, sex, violence, and rock and roll. In the crossfire, Missouri State Representative Gene Dixon. And in Los Angeles, rock musician Mojo Nixon. Good evening. Welcome to Crossfire. It's 7.30 p.m. Eastern Time. Do you know what your child is listening to? It could be something like this from a rap group called Two Live Crew. Me So Horny is just the title of this song. Most of the lyrics are too rude even for Crossfire, and the album it's on has sold more than a million copies in the past six months. Five years ago, the record industry agreed to voluntary labeling of records with violent or lewd lyrics. But critics say voluntarily, excuse me, voluntary labeling has not worked. They want laws requiring warning labels on records, or even laws forbidding the sale of records to teenagers. Is this prudence or censorship? Pat? Mr. Nixon, I gather Mojo is not your baptismal name, so we'll just go with Mr. Nixon. Uh, well, I, I, 75, I know, let me ask you a question, Mr. Nixon. 75 to 80 percent, I think, of American parents and people want warning labels on these kind of records that they feel are salacious or anti-Semitic or racist. What is wrong with practicing a little democracy and letting the warning labels be placed there? Well, democracy might be interrupted by a little thing called the Constitution, a little thing called the First Amendment there, Pat. I think that um, mm -hmm. parents have a responsibility to their children, not to other people's children. All right, well, look, there's no one violating the constitutional rights, I think, of this crowd that, what is it, crew something or other, Michael, that wrote me so horny. They're allowed to say what they want, but what we have here is a product. Now, just like the FDA requires warning labels, you got warning labels on cigarette advertising. What is wrong with the state putting a warning label on a product like this, where Ice T apparently has his own warning label? What is wrong with the state simply doing that? I don't think the state's going to be able to define what, you know, what is it they don't like. I mean, we may, me and you may agree that some song that goes, you're, you know, I want to rape your mama is a very bad song, and we both agree. But at what point, you know, does, at what point do you put the label on? Does, uh, well, does, the, does the word fornication, I had a big problem with the word fornication in a song, you know, which is uh, in the Bible. I, you know, I, I don't know where you, where you draw the line. Well, I think let me suggest, Mr. Take... Let me try to help you out, Mr. Nixon. Try to help uh, the me Supreme out. Court, the Supreme Court has said that I think pornography and obscenity are not protected forms of speech, and so you leave it to the local community and the states in this country to make that determination and put the warning labels on. That's the way we've got it, a 50-state federal system. What is wrong with letting Missouri do one thing? New York City is obviously going another, to do another. I was on the impression that the, the bill that uh, Representative Dixon has is uh, to ban the sales to those under minors, those under 18, not to just to put the warning label on. No, is, no, is, that, is, excuse, is that no, true? Excuse me, to be fair to Ms., uh, to Jean Nick Dixon, as I understand her law, she only wants the warning label for That's now, exactly she says. Right. However, exactly. here is your attempt to define what you don't, what you want to label in these rock lyrics. You want a label that says, this record contains one or more of the following. Nudity, Satanism, suicide, sodomy, incest, bestiality, sado sadomasochism, adultery, murder, morbid violence, or any deviant sexual conduct in a violent context, use or illegal use of drugs or alcohol. That's exactly now, right. Now, does that mean if if one lyric in one album, in one lyric in one song on an album says, hey baby, let's take off our clothes. That means the whole album has got to be wrapped in opaque paper and got to contain this warning label. You know, what we're talking about here are, we're talking about a segment of music that is promoting illegal acts to our young people. That's what we're talking about. We're talking about lyrics such as I have here before me that are encouraging bestiality. That's sex with animals, necrophilia, which is sex with the dead. We're talking about Do you illegal have any acts. Ev evidence that any teenager has ever listened to these albums and gone out and practiced sex with an animal or sex with a dead person? Do you have any evidence that they haven't? L you're the one who wants the law, <laughs> ma'am, not me. It's why, why is the evidence necessary? I think the evidence is that we have statistics today that show that our teenagers in America are in trouble. 92% of the 87 graduating high school class, out of 92% of them, 56% of them 
were, had begun drinking before graduation. Do you think that's a larger percentage than before rock music was invented? Yes, it is, as a matter of fact. Right. Let me, let Mr. me, let Nixon. me, have, let me, have, oh, let me Mr. Nixon back here. Right. Let me ask you this, Mojo. Put, put me uh, back in here, Pat. We're, we're dragging you back in. <laughs> there was about, uh, I think last year, maybe my, I think my numbers are correct. There are 600,000 attempted suicides among teenagers, only 1%, 6,000 were successful. These kids killed themselves. There, mm -hmm. were, there are several cases, Mojo, where individuals spent all day long listening to this rock music, depressive rock music, some of it recommending suicide, and then the kids take their life. Now, you don't look like a guy who would promote that kind of thing. You look like a fellow who would want a warning label on that and say, look, this is rotten stuff. No, no, uh, no, no. I'm, I, you're, you're misreading my face there, Mr. Buchanan. I think that the parent and the teenager, the teenager, I think we're talking about teenagers as if they're idiotic children who are innocent vessels to be filled. Teenagers are old enough to start making decisions for themselves. This is the land of the free, the home of the brave. You have to take responsibility for your actions. Teenage suicide has been going on since Romeo and Juliet. To say that rock music has something to do with it is to say that long hair had to do with something with the Beatles. To say that, you know, Elvis is promoting teenage sexuality or something in the 50s, you know, that appears to be funny to us now. But um, I, I think we're way off the mark here. I think parents have a responsibility when they bring children into the world to raise them to know right from wrong. Parents need... Yeah, and, right. and I don't. Should, 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 should people be forbidden? To, should teenagers be forbidden to see the movie? To, uh, yeah, Ms. Ms. There Dixon are certain of things. Romeo and Juliet, which is extremely depressing and certainly romanticizes teenage suicide. Let me tell you, though, we do not allow our children to attend our X-rated movies. Are we? What is, about, uh, what about, are we talking about somebody here who would really want to mandate parental ignorance? All we're asking for is more information. We're not censoring speech. We're not saying he can't say it. He can't sell it. We're saying, tell you us have, what's in it you before have we said, buy it. You have said you're not saying that yet, but that you might want to mm -hmm. actually. If you had your way, would you ban the sale of these these records that come in these categories that you don't like let to me teenagers? Let you, me tell you, you this. Yeah. Do we do we want to promote these illegal acts to our children? You know, I am almost ashamed to sit here and tr tell you that I'm trying to work out something where the record industry can sell this filth and trash to our teens when it rightfully should be banned. You would it like to. I'm saying it so, rightfully so. should be. Go ahead, Mojo. Yes, I can't believe, I can't believe what I'm hearing. You know, two live crew and these satanic, you know, heavy metal bands as, you know, as, you know, filthy as they may be, the, the people that have brought them to the public attention in America are women like Tipper Gore, like Miss Dixon's, other people have brought them, no one would know about them. The marketplace, MTV, you know, the radio stations, they don't play them. The only way people know about them is by this crazy, you know, sticker banning stuff. Let the public decide what it wants to buy, what it doesn't want to buy. The same way the public decides who they elect and who they don't elect. Okay, we'll be back with more on whether dirty lyrics on rock and roll record albums were what James Madison had in mind protecting when he wrote the First Amendment.